Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. When doing log analysis, one of the tricky and interesting things uh, to figure out is usually clusters of activity, meaning uh, different actors, for example, doing the same thing at the same time. Well, one of the ways you detect uh, these kind of class of activity tends to be visualization. That's a real powerful tool here. In particular, if you're not quite sure yet what you're looking for and you just need to basically play around with different uh, parameters. Guy looked at a relatively new tool that allows you to create those visualizations relatively quickly. It's a part of uh, Kibana and it's the Vega log parsing, uh, which is included and uh, Guy also presents uh, some sample queries that he used uh, with our honeypot. Uh, Guy maintains the seam feature of the honeypot that allows you uh, to sift uh, through data more easily. One of the issues that got quite a bit of attention with respect to the uh, CrowdStrike incident was the use of curl drivers by CrowdStrike in order to gain intimate access to the operating system. Sophos now has an interesting article talking about how the bad guys are also taking advantage of kernel drivers. There are a number of protections, of course, that Microsoft introduced to prevent malicious uh, kernel drivers. Mostly they're centered around digitally signing uh, these drivers, but in the past attackers have been successful in either obtaining stolen uh, keys that allowed them to sign their own drivers or use vulnerable drivers, the good old bring your vulnerable uh, driver exploit. Sophos is looking at uh, one particular malware family that they're calling poor try and uh, stone stop. These have been around uh, for a couple of years and they basically talk about how they evolved over that time and how they sort of used different tricks in order uh, to sneak the malicious driver into the operating system with the goal then to actually disable endpoint protection software like CrowdStrike, Sophos and others. And CISA, in collaboration with a number of other U.S. government agencies, has uh, published a pretty good summary of activity that they are attributing uh, to cyber actors linked to Iran. Now, I've mentioned this before. If you hear something being attributed to Iran, you're usually not talking about zero days and the like. It's really sort of more a little bit sort of the bottom feeders when it comes to APTs. But yes, they are still dangerous in part because these vulnerabilities tend to hang around a while. If you're sort of looking at the write-up, one theme here that sort of comes up over and over is that they are using leaked credentials that they found or weak credentials, default credentials. And then, of course, a number of well-known and reasonably recent, like April uh, this year, July this year, vulnerabilities. The entry point is often an attack against a security product, uh, some kind of a gateway. Palo Alto is one that's being mentioned here, F5 and uh, similar products. Also, Checkpoint uh, is being attacked, again, often via well-known vulnerabilities. The reason I think you should read these reports is, first of all, to give you threat hunting ideas. There's a lot of sort of indicators of compromise here that you can look for, but also uh, to yet again emphasize how important it is to keep those uh, gateways, uh, those perimeter protection devices up to date. And on a similar note, Trend Micro has a write-up about exploits against Atlassian's uh, Confluence uh, server. The vulnerability being exploited here is from January, I believe. And the payload is a crypto miner. If you ever find a crypto miner on a system, please do not stop just at removing the crypto miner. You're probably dealing with a system just like uh, these Confluence instances that have a well-known, easily exploited vulnerability. It probably got exploited several times. So the crypto coin miner is just the most visible artifact of uh, these exploits. 
And talking about easily exploitable vulnerability, if you are using Fortra File Catalyst workflow, make sure you have removed the HSQL database that comes with a File Catalyst workflow. Fortra today released an advisory stating that it does use some static default credentials. What they're also saying is you shouldn't really running that database. It's really just meant sort of uh, for the installation process. Then for production, you should switch to another uh, database. That apparently isn't a manual somewhere, but well, who reads that? Well, if you don't like to read, maybe you like to listen. So please subscribe to this podcast, recommend it to friends, enemies, and pets, and talk to you again tomorrow.